For me now, it'd have to be the emerald. God, the emerald's a lovely sweet. I could never object to an emerald. Or a Scots clan. Oh, the Scots clan are nice. Oh, they are. Yet you haven't a clue what you're talking about. The ice caramel is in a whole different league to the Scots clan or the emerald. You'd be sucking away there at the ice and you'd forget about the caramel and suddenly it'd jump up on you like a surprise. That's true. <laughs> what do you think, Jaxie? Uh, I've dead hold of it. What about the bonbon? Will you fick off with your fickin' bonbon? <laughs> now, bar the door there and the small bit of toffee inside of there the size of a mouse is dropping. I like the bonbon. No, for me it has to be the ice caramel. Or an emerald. Will you fick off with your fickin' emerald? <laughs> Here it is. Good afternoon and welcome to the one o'clock news. The death has occurred in America of the noted show jumper, Jumping Jerry Houlihan. A native of Killinescully, Mr. Houlihan died in Boston in a home for bewildered circus performers. In a statement, the Taoiseach said Jerry Houlihan had brought joy to millions with his energetic riding. Mr. Houlihan's death comes just two days after his horse, Killinescully King, was put down. He was 87. The Met Office has confirmed that last... 87. It's a fair age for a horse. It was jumping Jerry Hoolan was 87, you loser. Oh. Killer Scully King was no more than 61 or 62. That'll be about right. They said in the paper they spent 73 of his 87 years in the saddle. Fair play to him. Oh, in fairness, he could ride, Anton. I remember seeing him one time on Killer Scully King, and he cleared 8 foot 6 at a Jim Cannon faggot. A record never before equal since. Ah, an Irish record. An Irish record, except the shower above in Dublin wouldn't recognise it, cos it was downhill. Bastards! If there's a shower worse than them black and tens, it's that shower above in Dublin. Wasn't he supposed to represent her in the Olympics one time? Oh, that's right. They headed off for Melbourne to put Killing Scully on the map. What happened? Oh, he tells this lovely. Well, jumping Jerry Holen on the back of Killing Scully King, set off from the church abroad to Great Who Han, Bunt and Dare and Brass Bands. Oh, there was even a telegram from the Pope, organised by Father Heaslip. Fair play. Well, when they got him to the airport, no matter what they tried, they couldn't get him on the plane. Or they tried everything, blinkers there, carrots, sticks, the whole lot. In the end, old Sergeant Riley had to shoot him. With a hypodermic dart. With a hypodermic dart. Well, it was supposed to last 48 hours, but somewhere over Asia, he woke up and broke out of the box and went up and down the aisle, jumping over seats and galloping up and down, kicking and bucking and threatening to put his foot through the floor of the plane. Oh, some of those horses are highly strong. Who said that about horses is jumping Jerry Hole and I'm talking about? Well, the plane was diverted. To Karachi. To Karachi. Well, jumping Jerry Hole and killing Scurry King went on foot to Kuala Lumpur. They got a boat then to Sydney and a train from Sydney to Melbourne. Just in time. For the Olympics. For the clause and ceremony. Oh, that was a big letdown for the parish. Oh, so jumping Jerry Hole and never set foot and kill his Scully again with the shame. What became of them? Why they say he travelled the world after that, picking up work wherever he could. Didn't they go to Hollywood? I heard that whenever John Wayne shot a Cherokee Indian, it was really Jerry that fell off the horse. Well, that would be right. And didn't he ride with the Cossacks up and down the steps? The steps? The Russian steps. So he shot a bear in the Urals. Which reminds me, I must see a man about a badger. There was a felon here once. That swore blind. He had a cousin, had an uncle that saw jumping Jerry Hoolan and killing the Scully King in Las Vegas, jumping out of a skyscraper into a barrel of yogurt. 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 How are you, Ben? How are you, Willie? Jimmy. Willie. Willie. Jimmy. What do you have? I won't stay, Jack. I just came down with a bit of good news. God, we could do with that. Did you hear about jumping Jerry Hoolan? I did. And that's the good news. He's to be buried here. In Kilna Scully. In Kilna Scully. I'm telling you, lads, it's the best thing that's happened us in years, eh? The death of someone famous is a great way for a town to celebrate. And I'll tell you, this will put the town on the map. True. Now, will you have a drink to celebrate? I know, Willie, we're grand. Oh, we will. I tell you, all we need now is a monument. Ah, he's too small, Dick. And besides, he looks nothing like jumping Jerry Holland. It's a pity. Because they have a hundred of them out the back. Ah, we must be able to do something, Dick. The funeral's on tomorrow, and it'll be nice to get an old monument up. Would you consider an equestrian statue? Ah, no, nothing fancy like that. Just a simple fell in the horse would be ideal. Just a sec, I'm the right man for that. That'll be 150, good man. Now, let's get your money ready, will you? 
Hello, Pa. It's me, Dick. Ah, how are you, boss? Listen, I have Willie Power here beside me. We're in the market for a horse. A horse? I have a lovely piebald there, sir. It's about 14 hands. Well, what we're looking for really is something for a monument. A dead horse? Actually, that's no better either. Well, we were thinking more along the lines of a statue. A statue? Yes. Yeah, I'll keep me eye for something for you, sir. Good man, good man. But that'll be about ten euro. And we'll have it at that. Good girl. Next, come on, let's roll up there. For a thousand years, this little village has languished under the jack boots of the fodden invader's head. I tell you this much now, boys. You are going to battle at a funeral tomorrow. You're not a shower of monkeys being paraded out at feeding time. First came the Vikings, who were ravaging our monks and plundering our daughters. They took what jewels and silverware and we had them. Then came the Black and Hands, who for 800 years marched the length and breadth of this little village until the blood ran red in the fields. Wake up, Joe, wake up, wake up, I promise you. I want you now to turn around again. Get out! Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey. Oh, and then the famine. My long potatoes rotted in the streets. Take that out of your mouth. Take that out of your mouth. Either way, be all your house. If I catch you away from the day of the funeral, I kill you. Spell, pull up the way past right here now, listen. Up that. You won't get away with it on the day. Ah! And while misery stalked the back streets and the lanes of this little village, we looked deep inside our bowels for a hero. And that's where we found Jumpin' Jerry Hoolan. Your hero, my hero, and everybody's hero. Well. If I go easy on the black and tan stuff. That's all, Tash. And it might be a good idea to finish up with a couple lines from Yates. Good girl, here. Buy yourself some sweets. Thanks, Uncle Willie. There's something coming. Are you Willie Power? Yes. I'm Colleen Houlihan. Uh, hello, Mrs. Houlihan. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind, we're a bit busy at the moment. We're expecting a funeral. Jumping Jerry Houlihan? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, if, if, if you wouldn't mind. We're very busy, Mrs. Houlihan. Mrs. Houlihan? Yeah, Miss Houlihan. Jumping Jerry was my father. <laughs> I'd like a piper. A piper? A bagpiper. Playing Come on Eileen as the coffin is lord. Oh, that'd be nice, all right. Ought to be good, all right. I want a phone. <laughs> <laughs> In the coffin, in case I'm not dead. <laughs> uh, it happens, all right. <coughs> there was a grand uncle of a Todd cousin of mine. He died of the flu epidemic in 1918. When was that again, then? I don't know. Sometime in the last century, Jaxie. They buried him above in Faggart, and three days later, he woke up. I love this. He tells this lovely. <laughs> he started knocking like a demented woodpecker on the coffin. Oh, and the widow held him in awe when she was overthrown down a few flowers. She not take him up? Not to John, when you stop. She was doing a bit of knocking of her own. <laughs> she was after taking up with the old R.I.C. sergeant. <laughs> well, three weeks, she sat above in the grave and helped him banging away the poor old devil. 
and she never told anyone. What happened then? <laughs> and the knocking stopped. Well, Dan, what class of a send off do you want? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Jaxie. I'll not be incinerated. The American one had jumping Jerry's ashes inside in the class of a tub. Ha! <laughs> Norton, you loser. You should have seen his veins. <laughs> oh, poor old Willie. <laughs> his big funeral up in smoke. <laughs> And what's going to happen now? Oh, according to your one, Jumpin' Jerry wants his ashes scattered above in the bog of Balak. I ask you. I tell you, lads, you'll have no look for being burnt. I couldn't trust any man that's not prepared to go down when the time comes. Jumpin' Jerry Hoolahan is at the cost of me a right few, Bob. Seventeen reeds I've had to get him for people who wanted to lay him on the grave. What are they going to do now? Fling him across the bog like frisbees? All right, Dick. But it's a dying man's wish. We've got to fall in with it. Well, which reminds me, old Mrs. Wigmore fell into the grave this morning. Right, I'll get it filled in. Someone should get her filled in. In the meantime, could you look after that for me, Dick? He looks like one of the hoolans, all right. It is not as hot as it looks. If you like, I could come around later and show you how to scrape it. Oh, that would be wonderful, Dieter. But it is perfectly natural for one that size to ooze a little after you unwrap it. Is that right? Well, that's good to know. <laughs> oh, Sergeant, how are you? Uh, Ma'am. <laughs> You're calling later. For the dog license? <laughs> what? Yes. Goodbye, Mr. Langer. Goodbye, Gretty. So, Sergeant Dick, what can I be doing for you? Have you seen Timmy? You have an old painting job for him. Uh, no, I haven't seen him. Ah, fair enough. Could I interest you, perhaps, Sergeant, in some bra? Sergeant Dick? A bra? That's what he said, bra. Bra? It's an Italian cheese from Piedmont. Yeah, it's a strong, dense, salty cow's milk cheese with a, a thick, light brown rind. Good man, Dan. Oh, it's not for the faint heart, I can tell you. Oh, Dan knows his cheese. <clears throat> well, that's a relief. For a minute, I'd had it was some class of a pervert. Him being from Europe and everything. Have any of you seen Timmy? Oh, he's gone to strain the spuds. He's not in any trouble, is he, Dick? Ah, no, we have an old painting job for him. I want to turn a dummy into a monument. Oh, Timmy's the man for that. Just make him stand still. <laughs> <laughs> Around here, he was a hero. Who's a hero? Jumping Jerry Hoolan, the famous horseman. <laughs> he was a horse's ass. Drank every cent he laid his hands on, and tormented us for 70 years with tuneless versions of Danny Boy. <laughs> but he must have loved killing a scully. Killing a scully? He never mentioned it. But he's ashes. He wanted them scattered here. He wanted them scattered over Sydney. Oh, for the Olympics. No. Sydney lived downstairs from us. Pops hated his guts. <laughs> the only reason I'm here, honey, is because Willie Power is paying for this trip. <laughs> what do you mean, gone? I mean gone, as in not here. Ah, you weren't broken into again, Dick, were you? I tell you, you'll have to get a security company to keep an eye on this place. It's not that. But what? Gerda Ryan was on last night. And? Well, you know him and his old hygiene. What do you mean? He threw him out. The ashes? Yeah. We'll get more. Do you know what I know? Andy Orton. Andy Orton? Yes, gone. Oh, my God almighty. What do you want to do? Well, right now, I want the ground to open up and swallow me. Oh, that reminds me. Old Mrs. Wigmore fell into the grave again. Ah, far. And so, we bid a fond farewell to a man okay. who made Kid in the Scully famous the world over. Famous for courage. Famous for adventure. But most of all, for his exploits in the saddle. <laughs> now, in a few moments, Willie Power will unveil a monument to the deceased in the main street. But in the meantime, I'd like to ask someone to come forward and say a few words. One of the congregation, <laughs> come forward now and <laughs> say a few kind words <laughs> about the deceased. About our great sporting <laughs> hero, <laughs> Jumping <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> what about yourself, Willie? Excuse me, Father. Uh, I just want to say, Father, that Jean Joe Hickey, or uh, 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 as he was known, was the greatest shower of blackguards 
that God had put on this earth. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, Father. He was the greatest liar. <clears throat> but it, it has to be said. John Joe Hickey was a bastard whose funeral is tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Hello, Anne, how are you? Thank you, Anne. Kitty, well done with the flowers. Well done with the flowers. Hello, Jerry. How are you? Jerry. Dick, take the man yourself. Good girl, good girl. I think that went very well, Farrell. Hello, Siobhan, how are you? Well done now, Farrell. Jim, good man yourself. And clock till time and times are done. The silver apples of the moon, the golden apple of the sun. The ladies and gentlemen of Kilscully, I give you jumping Jerry Hoolan. I gotta get up the liquor. I'm seeing two of them. A nun? Yes, a nun. A vaz, a jug, anything at the stage. Where are we supposed to get a nun? It doesn't have to be a nun. Just like a nun. What's like a nun? Well, I suppose a tea caddy wouldn't be a million miles away from it. What about a, a gem jar? Gem jar? Well, too transparent, that say, Jexy. You know, I have a flask. A flask? Oh, that is good. Huh? Look, there isn't much time. Find something, fill it, and have it at the bog of Ballock by two. The pride of killing a scully is at stake. Here, yeah, try on two pints there, Jexy. She's only ten to one. And, uh, what makes, uh, today's scattering so, so, so poignant, uh, is that, uh, jumping. Jumping Jerry Hoolan's ashes, and a, a, a metaphor, uh, a class of a metaphor for the Irish uh, diaspora, and scattered as they are um, across the four corners of the globe. Any chance we could get a move on, Willie? We've been here since two o'clock. It's going to be getting dark soon. Yeah, that's typically you, Larry. Yeah, in an election year, trying to make a political football out of jumping Jerry Hoolan's ashes. Uh, and interfering in established funereal protocol. Well, I, I tell you something, Danny. If you think that I am going to capitulate to your demands, especially after we languishing under the jackboat of the fun invader after 800 years of the like, yeah. Thanks be to Jesus. In a few uh, minutes time, Jumpin' Jerry Hoolan will get his final wish and have his ashes scattered to the four hearts. Well, it could have been worse, like. In what way could it have been worse, Mr. Dan? Well, no matter how bad things are, they could always be worse. Could you not have used something better than cement to fill the churn with? But your Sergeant Dick gave us a great deal on it. There it is, magic memory moments. Turn it up. Well, it's that time again, magic memory moments. And here's Jimmy. Well, good to be back again. <laughs> yes, Jimmy. Last program in the series, and the old memory hasn't let you down yet. No, it hasn't let me down yet, but then they don't call me the memory man for nothing. Oh, the memory man! What are you all set for this week? All set. Okay, first challenge coming up, and it's from Tommy Hassett and Tubber Norrie. Tommy, you're on now. Tommy's query concerns the 1956 Olympics in Melbourne. Now, we all know that Ronnie Delaney won the gold in the 59. But who came before? Ah, uh, Melbourne Olympics, 1956. That was the 1500 metres final. Ireland's great moment of glory was on the 1st of December. 
First time we ever had the Summer Olympics in our winter. Anyway, Tommy only wants to know who was fourth? Lazo Tabori of Hungary. Third was Brian Hewson, Britain. Second was a friend of mine used to call him Pistenstein. <laughs> but actually his name was Weissenstein of Germany. And the gold medal, the one and only 341.2, Ronnie Delaney. Ah, who could ever forget? What a day, what an occasion. And what an answer. Memory man, you've done it again. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can get you this one. It's from Timmy Higgins, Killing a Scully. Hi, Timmy, hey. Hey. Timmy's question is actually about the late, great show jumper, Jumpin' Jerry Houlihan. He wants to know, what are your memories of him? Who? The show jumper, Jumpin' Jerry Houlihan. Oh. Now, there was a Polish show jumper called Jerzy Hulinski. I'll give you Jerzy Hulinski! And then there was a great Carlo Hurler, Jerry Hooligan. One of the best ever. God almighty. Huh? Who? Oh, what's his name again? Jumpin' Jerry Houlihan, you know that! Jumpin' Jerry Houlihan, the show jumper. Come on, Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! Where was he from? Killing a Scully. Killing a Scully? God, I've been at loads of Olympic Games and World Cups and 2,513 All-Ireland Finals. I think I've been in every village of Ireland. I've been in everywhere from Hackballs Cross to Belug and Anabolica. Killing a Scully. Killing a Scully. Switch it off, Jaxie, before I break it. I've never heard of it. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't exist. Well, do you know what? If there's a shower worse than the black and tens, it's that shower above an RTE. Yogurt. How are you, Ben? How are you, Willie? Jimmy? Willie? Willie. Jimmy? What do you have? I won't stay, Jack. I just came down with a bit of good news. God, we could do with that. Did you hear about Jumpin' Jerry Hoolan? I did. And that's the good news. He's to be buried here. In Kilna Scully. In Kilna Scully. I'm telling you, lads, it's the best thing that's happened us in years, eh? The death of someone famous is a great way for a town to celebrate. And I'll tell you, this'll put the town on the map. True. Now, will you have a drink to celebrate? I know, Willie. We're grand. Oh, we will. I tell you, all we need now is a monument. Ah, he's too small, Dick. And besides, he looks nothing like jumping Jerry Holen. It's a pity. Because they have a hundred of them out the back. Ah, we must be able to do something, Dick. The funeral's on tomorrow, and it'll be nice to get an old monument up. Would you consider an equestrian statue? Ah, no, nothing fancy like that. Well, the plane was diverted to Karachi. To Karachi. Well, jumping Jerry Holland and killing Scurry King went on foot to Kuala Lumpur. They got a boat then to Sydney and a train from Sydney to Melbourne. Just in time. For the Olympics. For the clause and ceremony. Oh, that was a big letdown for the parish. Oh, so Jump and Jerry Holland never set foot in Killers Gully again with the shame. What became of them? Why do you say he travelled the world after that, picking up work wherever he could? Didn't they go to Hollywood? I heard that whenever John Wayne shot a Cherry Oakey Indian, it was really Jerry that fell off the horse. No, well, that'd be right. And did he ride with the Cossacks up and down the steps? The steps? The Russian steps. So he shot a bear in the Urals. Which reminds me, I must see a man about a badger. Oh. There was a felon here once that swore blind. He had a cousin, had an uncle that saw jumping Jerry Hoolan and killing the Scully King in Las Vegas, jumping out of a skyscraper into a barrel of yogurt. Yogurt? A native of killing the Scully, Mr. Hoolan died in Boston in a home for bewildered circus performers. In a statement, the Taoiseach said Jerry Hoolan had brought joy to millions with his energetic riding. Mr. Hoolahan's death comes just two days after his horse, Killin' a Scully King, was put down. He was 87. The Met Office has confirmed that last... 87. It's a fair age for a horse. I was jumping Jerry Hoolahan was 87, you loser. Oh. Killin' a Scully King was no more than 61 or 62. That'll be about right. They said in the paper they spent 73 of his 87 years in the saddle. Fair play to him. Oh, in fairness, he could ride, Anton. I remember seeing him one time on Killing the Scully King, and he cleared eight foot six at a Jim Cannon faggot. A record never before equal since. Ah, uh, an Irish record. An Irish record, except the shower above in Dublin wouldn't recognize it, because it was downhill. Bastards. If there's a shower worse than them... For me now, it'd have to be the Emerald. God, the Emerald's a lovely sweet. I could never object to an Emerald. Or a Scots clan. Oh, the Scots clan are nice. They are. Lads, you haven't a clue what you're talking about. 
The ice caramel is in a whole different league to the Scots clan or the Emerald. You'd be sucking away there at the ice and you'd forget about the caramel and suddenly it'd jump up on you like a surprise. That's true. <laughs> what do you think, Jaxie? Uh, I've said all of it. What about the bonbon? Will you fake off with your faking bonbon? <laughs> now, bar the door, Stan. The small bit of toffee inside of there the size of a mouse is dropping. I like the bonbon. No, for me it has to be the ice caramel. Or an emerald. Will you fake off with your faking emerald? <laughs> Here it is. Good afternoon and welcome to the one o'clock news. The death has occurred in America of the noted show jumper, Jumping Jerry Houlihan. Black and Tens is that show above in Dublin. Wasn't he supposed to represent her in the Olympics one time? Oh, that's right. They headed off for Melbourne to put Killing Scully on the map. What happened? Oh, he tells this lovely. Well, Jumping Jerry Houlihan on the back of Killing Scully King set off from the church abroad to Great Houlihan, Bunt and Dare and Brass Bands. Oh, there was even a telegram from the Pope organised by Father Heaslip. Fair play. Well, when they got him to the airport, no matter what they tried, they couldn't get him on the plane. Or they tried everything, blinkers there, carrots, sticks, the whole lot. In the end, old Sergeant Riley had to shoot him. With a hypodermic dart. With a hypodermic dart. Well, it was supposed to last 48 hours, but somewhere over Asia, he woke up broke out of the box and went up and down the aisle jumping over seats and galloping up and down, kicking and bucking and threatening to put his foot through the floor of the plane. Oh, some of those horses are highly strung. Who said that about horses is jumping Jerry Holland I'm talking about? 